The toga, beloved by fraternities in the United States, is far more than a garment worn by beer-drinking partygoers. In ancient Rome, the toga was a symbol for the wearer's class, political status, gender, and age. Its unique role in Roman society deserves to be remembered. Unlike the modern version of the toga, which is essentially a bedsheet draped casually about the body, the Roman toga was huge, heavy, and unwieldy. It had to be wrapped around the shoulders and body in a very specific way to drape in the manner desired. The particular type of drape or even knotting of the cloth changed over time. Some historians estimate togas could be from 12 to 20 feet long. The type of cloth used varied depending on who was wearing it and where the toga was designed to be worn. In the early Roman Republic, the toga were made out of wool, which made them incredibly warm in addition to heavy. Because they were hard to wear, togas were mainly used in formal settings and, as everyday wear, were impractical. Appropriate clothing and hairstyles were incredibly important in Roman culture. It was believed that how someone looked indicated their character and morality and even their oration ability. Seneca, one of the men who tutored the Emperor Nero, said, You are familiar with the carefully coiffed young men, with their gleaming beards and hair, everything from a box. You can never hope for anything strong or solid from them. Speaking style is the dress and adornment of the mind. If it has been trimmed and dyed and treated, it shows that the mind is not wholly right and has some kind of flaw. Elaborate elegance is not a manly ornament. In addition to morality, Romans believed a slovenly appearance also showed immorality and divided the social classes. Horace, a court poet under Emperor Augustus, recorded another's reaction to his appearance when he wrote, If I run into you with a bugling barber has cut my hair unevenly, you laugh. If I wear a worn-out shirt beneath a new tunic or if my toga hangs crooked, you laugh. What then, when my own decisions clash with themselves? The toga was such an important part of the symbolism of Rome that some of her major poets described the Roman people as gens togata, or the toga-wearing race. Men of the ruling class in Rome, as well as certain types of priests, had the privilege of wearing a white toga lined with purple. The style was also worn by freeborn girls and boys to mark their status in society. A completely purple toga with gold embroidery or trim was worn by generals while parading through Rome in celebratory processions called triumphs. The purple toga was also the clothing of choice of the emperors of Rome. The type of purple varied according to whatever was in vogue at that moment. The Roman fads went from crimson to dark purple, and they also experimented with dyeing clothes twice to get more vibrant colors. Regular male citizens, not of the senatorial or ruling class, wore white togas, which were known as toga virilis, or togas of manhood. Young boys wore a toga with a red stripe around the bottom. Some historians say women wore togas at one point as well, but in the later years of the Roman Republic, they mainly wore stolas, which were a type of long dress. Candidates for political office would rub their togas with chalk, making them as white as possible. This was a symbol of their so-called moral purity and also made them easy to spot in a crowd. The modern word candidate takes its name from this toga, which was called the toga candida. The dark toga, or toga pula, was worn by those in mourning, but only in private. It was apparently considered uncouth to wear a mourning toga in public. A purposely darkened toga smeared with dirt or filth was worn by those practicing political protest or by accused during their trials. It showed that the man in the soiled clothing was in peril of losing his place in society and his emotional distress because of this. The historian Quintilian relates that an accused man appearing in court in, a dirt, in dirty clothing had as much effect on a jury's decision as showing actual wounds. He wrote, the force of such things is for the most part enormous, as it drives the minds of people who are drawn into the present circumstances. He also said it was such a pervasive custom that if an accused person did not wear a soiled toga, that person's lawyer had to explain to the jury why. When the Senate was discussing whether to exile the Roman politician and legendary orator Cicero, he dirtied his toga and grew out his hair and beard as well, existing in a state of squalor to show his distress. The men who supported Cicero did the same in an act of solidarity. After the stabbing death of Julius Caesar, the entire Senate changed into dirty togas to show the public the height of their distress. Cicero wrote that they dressed in that manner to show the grief of the country. The move was also designed to sway the emotions of the populace in their favor, as Caesar had been incredibly popular with the masses. Romans considered a speaker's manipulation of the toga during a speech as much a part of the show as the words that were spoken. The way a man held his arm or the smallest gesture made the drape move about his neck. As the speaker came to the height of his argument and was impassioned and sweating, the toga could be dropped or shrugged off to underlie the words that were being spoken. 
The toga eventually fell out of style as the easier and more wearable tunic came of age, and when the Emperor Constantine embraced Christianity, the toga began to be seen as both outdated and, well, too pagan, and so it fell out of style until the modern era. The Guinness World Record for the largest toga party is held by the Queensland University Union and Queensland University of Technology Student Guild in Australia. They had more than 3,700 people dressed in togas. If you enjoyed this History Guy short, then feel free to click that like button, subscribe to our channel, and check us out on Patreon, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and our merchandise on teespring.com.